This video is about absolute value functions and transformations. A family of functions includes a parent function and its transformations. So what you're looking at here is the parent function for absolute values. The equation of this V is Y equals the absolute value of X. And we're going to explore that a little bit more on the next slide. But for now, just know that the basic function for absolute value is shaped like a V. And all the transformations of it are different things you can do to that V to change its shape or location on the coordinate plane. So the first transformation that you see here is just the same exact V shifted down four. The equation of that would look something like absolute value of X, and then the whole thing minus four. That shifts your Y values all down four. This graph is the same V but shifted to the left. So this time we're trying to change the X values of it. So instead of putting our transformation on the outside of the absolute value, we actually transform the X, which is inside the absolute value. And you have to transform it in the opposite way that you want it to move. And that's something that we'll explore also on the next couple slides. This transformation is the same V of the parent function, but it's like someone grabbed the arrows and pulled them up to make a skinnier V. And the equation of that would look something like Y equals 2 multiplied by the absolute value of X. So when there's a number in front being multiplied, that changes how steep the V is. And as you can tell, this one, it's like someone grabbed the arrows and pulled them down to make the V wider and flatter. And the equation for that would look something like one-third times X, a fraction that's less than one, is going to make the V become shallower and wider. So the graph of the parent absolute value function is V-shaped. And here's why. If you look at the function F of X equals absolute value of X, those absolute value brackets are going to make whatever's inside of them become positive. So if you input a negative 2, the output, the f of x, is going to be positive 2 because you're taking the absolute value of it. If you input a negative 1, you're going to get a positive 1 out. The absolute value of 0 is 0, and the absolute value of positive numbers are still positive. So as you can see, our f of x values are going 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. That's how you get that v shape. So let's put these points on the graph. We have negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. Connect the dots into that V shape, the parent function for absolute value. And it's very important that we label the vertex because the vertex is our most important point. Here it's located at 0, 0. Let's write that word down, vertex. The vertex is the point where your V turns around. And when we start transforming our V, we're always going to get that vertex on there first so we know where the center of our V is located. So now we've transformed our function. It doesn't just say the absolute value of x anymore. Now it has a number that's being subtracted from x inside, and it has the number plus 2 outside. So as we learned from that first slide, these things are going to take our vertex, or a v, and move them side to side or up and down. So that minus 1 inside tells us that we're going to move the x values all to the right. I know it's the opposite of what you would think it would be, but that's how horizontal transformations work, side to side transformations work. So because it says x minus 1, I know my vertex is going to be starting at positive 1 as the x value. And that plus 2 tells us that we're going to take all the y values and move them up 2. So my new vertex is going to be located at 0.12. Let's find that. And there are no other transformations or no other numbers in this equation. So I know that from that vertex, the rest of the v is going to look just like the parent function. And if you remember, the parent function was 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. So this one is going to move in that same pattern. It's going to go up 1 over 1 to the next point, and up 1 over 1 to the next point. And it's going to do the same thing in the other direction to create that V shape. So you don't need to use a table of values every time. All you really need to do is find that vertex, and then almost like you're using slope, continue in both directions to get that V shape. Now, how do we get a vertical stretch or compression? What those words mean is when you grab the arrows and make the V either skinnier and taller or wider and flatter. And if you make that uh, negative in front, you can actually reflect the V, make it go upside down and open downward. And that's all going to be determined by a number located right there, multiplied by the absolute value, as we saw on the first slide. So if that number is negative, the graph is going to be reflected. It's going to go upside down like that. If that number is greater than 1, if the absolute value of it is greater than 1, so for example, if you see the function 2 times the absolute value of x, like we saw on the first slide, 
you're going to get a vertical stretch. It's going to become a tall, skinny U. Whereas if the absolute value of it is less than 1, if it's a fraction, like 1 half, then you're going to get a wider and flatter V like that. So let's put that all together here. We have it looks like a horizontal transformation. So we're moving side to side because of this positive 1 in there. We have a vertical transformation because we have a plus 4 out there. And then we have a negative 1 third in front, which is going to affect the uh, stretch of the graph. So we have a vertex located at negative 1 4 because we're shifting it to the left one and we're shifting it up 4 units. I'm going to put that vertex on the graph first at negative 1 4. And then from there, we're going to use that negative 1 third to turn our V upside down and go down 1 over 3 in both directions as if it's the slope. We're going to go down 1 over 3, down 1 over 3. And I have room to do it again, so I will. And as you can see, this graph is a little bit wider than the parent function, right? Wider and flatter, and that's because that A value is a fraction less than 1. And it's upside down, and that's because the A value is negative. And it's good for us to label our vertex right on the graph, so we'll put negative 1, 4 on there. And that's it. Another one that puts it all together and asks us to do some additional analysis as well. This one wants us to graph the absolute value function list the coordinates of the vertex, and the y-intercept, and the point that is symmetrical to the y-intercept. This is a little bit of extra work here. So because our equation has a minus 1 inside and a minus 4 outside, our vertex is going to be located at positive 1, negative 4. So we're going to find that positive 1, negative 4 first. And then from there, we're going to use that 2 out front as if it's the slope. So that tells us we're going to go up 2 over 1 in both directions. So up 2 over 1 in both directions to get a V that's a little bit stretched out. It's a vertical stretch. And it's opening upwards because that 2 is positive. And now it wants us to list the coordinates of the vertex. So I'll put that on the graph here. And the coordinates of the y-intercept. That's pretty easy for us to see on this graph. But I'll show you how to calculate it by hand as well. But on this graph, you can see that the y-intercept is located at 0, negative 2. And you can see here, the point that's symmetrical to the y-intercept is 2, negative 2. By symmetrical, that just means if you had a line of symmetry that went right through your vertex here, it's the point that's located the mirror image of it on the other side of that axis of symmetry. To find the y-intercept by hand, in case you can't see it on your graph, well, if you look at a y-intercept, the x-coordinate of a y-intercept is always 0. So you can change the x-value to 0 in your equation. y equals 2, parentheses, 0 minus 1 minus 4, and just solve that for the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Remember to keep it in those absolute value brackets until you've simplified what's inside. And now that we've simplified that, that absolute value of negative 1 becomes positive 1. Oops, I don't need the absolute value symbols anymore. And 2 times 1 is 2, minus 4 is negative 2. That's how you can get the coordinates of the y-intercept you're not able to see it on the graph. And that is all.